Hey, it's Les Hall again with a quick uh, update on the Enable Phone Home System. This is prototype number three of the system that actually works. The battery is drained right now, otherwise you'd see an LED right about there, blinking in red or solid red, depending upon the mode the device was in. Now, what we have is something that's a little bit bulky, and it's got some Frankenstein-ish things, like I had to put an epoxy bead here to secure some of the elastic. I don't know, it's all the only glue I had. Whatever, it's a prototype. What are you going to do? And this hand, the fingers kind of barely work and the thumb doesn't, so... Uh, <laughs> my apologies for that. But it is a hand, and it does kind of have work. And uh, what we have is a battery chamber here with a 500 milliamp battery that lasts for seven hours. We will be improving that, but that's the, the mark at the moment. And then in here is the ESP8266 module. There we have it. And you can see that I have soldered right angle headers on all three sides. This header on the top is for an FTDI friend from Adafruit, or an FTDI cable from Adafruit, or another vendor's FTDI device. And it will, what it is, is this is digital USB, and it needs to be converted into analog USB, which travels over the wires really fast. So uh, there's a special chip that costs, the whole, the whole thing costs $15. And we save $15 worth of cost by not putting that chip on the device. It is separate, as the battery charger is separate. Now the battery connector is this little JST connector here that connects to two of the header pins. So I can just hold that connector and disconnect the module. And there we have it. There's gonna be some resistors soldered onto the one side, the other side is unused. And the, it makes it a lot bigger if you take the maximum height and the maximum dimension in all three, all three directions. You end up with a box this big. Now, that box can be trimmed down, and we don't need the maximum height, and we probably won't need the headers when we get to the final device, you know. Uh, so I can, I can pull that wire... And this video will be a little bit longer than our three-minute videos because I'm showing you some cool, cool stuff. I can pull out this battery and show it to you. There is the battery, again, from Adafruit. It is a 500 milliamp hour. It is text is upside down. Of course it would be. 500 milliamp hour battery. Probably backwards and upside down, just like me. No. <laughs> and we take it out and plug it in the charger. And that's very inefficient, so we're, gonna, we're, we're looking at different charging options, including a charger built onto the system. Now also on this hand, I have put a rubbery... Um, foamy kind of string, again from Adafruit, you know, guess what my favorite electronic store is? Think for a minute, you'll guess it. Okay, again from Adafruit, this is resistive material that when you stretch it, it takes on a different resistance value, and it's going to allow us to uh, count closures, hand closures per hour or per 10 minutes, however often we want to send in a data report. So we're going to save those, timestamp them, and send them in. Maybe timestamp them, I don't know. And uh, we are collaborating with people at Carnegie Mellon University. I won't mention their names in case they don't want to be mentioned on my silly, wacky, goofy little broadcast because I'm kind of a freakazoid in too many ways. 
but uh, you, you get the idea. Now, what I did is I put I put the uh, the mounting holes for with these crimps facing each other. I really need to rotate them 90 degrees, which I can do. It's printable, and the next one will be like that, so that they don't touch each other. They'll be up here, and then a, a wire will go in. And it'll go in here and go into the on a connector to the uh, device to two of the digital pins. There'll be a capacitor, and we'll use the time constant. We'll flip a bit, measure the time, flip the bit back, measure the time, flip, 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 flip a few times, and average those times. That'll give us the RC time constant, and we have a calibrated C, calibrated R, so we know what the actual resistance value is stretched or unstretched okay so that's it in a nutshell whoa six minutes way too long if you stayed through the entire video you you really are interested in this stuff most people won't listen to the whole video for that long but I wanted to share everything about it with you okay okay enough said that's a bulky prototype. I'm going to send it to Carnegie Mellon, even though I'm going to probably make them another one that's not so Cro-Magnon in nature, like me. <laughs> Can you tell I just woke up from a nap? I wake up happy. All right, enough of that stuff. Let's out praise the Lord. Go enable.